Welcome back motorized bike enthusiast. In today's video we're going to be exploring basic cleaning and maintenance of a motorized bike. When it comes to cleaning bikes, I'm practical. Living in the south where we have a lot of mud, like, like a lot of mud, I can't really justify detailing a bike because I ride them and they instantly get dirty. But cleaning is an important part of maintenance if only to uncover problems you didn't know were there. So we're going to be cleaning, but we're not going to be detailing the bikes. With that in mind, and the fact that I'm kind of lazy, I was originally going to clean one of the simpler bikes, the ones that's not really dirty. Uh, but then SuperClean reached out to us and sent a care package. And with SuperClean in the house, now we have to really put them to the test. So we're going to attempt to clean the Path Dragon. The dirtiest bike we have is the bike we pick when we don't care about what happens to a bike. If there's a muddy trail, the Path Dragon. If we gotta tow a trailer around town, the Path Dragon. If it's raining, you know, the Path Dragon. If you guys have been following the channel for any length of time, you know it's the bike that's been used, abused, and neglected. So, here we go. Now, because a lot of my viewers, including myself, are budget-oriented, we're going to start this video by taking a trip to the dollar store to see what useful little things we can find, not only for cleaning and maintenance, but just for general bike stuff. Let's go. Not much of a plan going in, just hit every aisle and pick something that jumps out at me. In this case, some red glow sticks could be useful if you find yourself riding at night and you don't have a backlight. They might be visible. To this day, I've still never used a Barillo pad, but I do know they could come in handy for some rough spots. You can't go wrong with duct tape for obvious reasons. A sanding sponge, because it's a sanding sponge. Now, of course, zip ties come in handy for cables, wires, lights, reflectors, holding your motor onto the bike. The possibilities are endless. The Path Dragon's current gas tank is held on by duct tape, so I have an idea for this. Full disclosure, LA Hubbard does not condone holding your gas tank onto the bike with duct tape. You only realize how handy utility brushes are when you don't have them, so grab them. My girl spotted a cool little toolbox. It's small and flimsy, but it's a dollar, and for the items we've purchased, I think they'll all fit. A nice little screwdriver set for a dollar, and the small handles make it easy to get into some tight spaces. Simple brush? We'll definitely get some use out of this. Nearly any hobby in the world can use a spray bottle. These will come in surprisingly handy. I know I'll use this for something, but it's squishy and I like it, so I'm getting it. And anytime you can organize stuff, well, these will come in handy. I think I'll put the jets in these. I don't know, maybe. We ride these bikes every single day. They don't stay parked. So when we talk about cleaning and maintenance, we're going into worst case scenario, real world situations. Let's find out exactly what it is like to be one of my bikes so you can get an idea of what we're in for. <clears throat> the problem is I got love for you. You ain't got no love for me. Some You guys know I'm a bit of a living room mechanic as I prefer to work on my bikes inside where it's warm and cozy in the winter time and cool and dry in the summer. But even I have my limits and would normally not consider cleaning this mud pile in the house. So I started to eyeball one of the products they sent us for absorbing spills and messes. This is definitely not designed to be used on carpet. So let's use it on carpet. First, we do have to be a little practical and knock off some of the loose dirt outside, so we got the garden hose and the scrub brush and went to town. Back when I was young and dumb and detailing cars, I used super clean a lot. It's good stuff. But I never once realized that you can actually dilute it, because the full strength stuff is not ideal for everything. In this case, we're going to use our bottle that we got from the dollar store and mix up a 3 to 1 ratio of super clean, one part, three parts water. This is what we're going to use for most of our work, and it does just fine. 
Before we put down the absorber and go to town with the spray bottle, we're going to try and poke loose anything we miss with the scrub brush. Basically, just take a screwdriver and knock stuff loose. Start at the top of the bike. It makes sense, as it's the cleanest part, and everything's going to run downhill anyways. So if you clean the bottom of the frame and then clean the top of the frame, well, congratulations, you're doing the bottom of the frame again. Anyways, remember, the whole reason we're cleaning the bike, for me at least, is part of maintenance. You're looking for hidden issues. So as you're cleaning each part, make sure you're also inspecting them. With most cleaner degreasers, super clean included, you need to rinse off whatever you're working on after you're done cleaning it. So we got a water bottle, and this is definitely something we wouldn't be doing over the carpet without the absorber. Keeping gunk and debris out of the cooling fins is definitely a good idea to help keep the engine running cool because, you know, airflow is a thing, but normally I wouldn't recommend spraying the super clean directly into the cylinder fins because some might get caught between the head and the cylinder, then you need to rinse this stuff off, but since I plan on removing the head to check the piston and cylinder, I'm not worried about it. If there's any in there, I can clean it out. An easily neglected area is obviously the seat tube. If you let this rust for too long, then adjusting your seat height can definitely become an issue, and that's the best case scenario. This tank has got to come off so we can figure something else besides duct tape. I cover the fuel hose with a bit of cloth so gunk doesn't fall down and plug up my filter. Foot pounds of torque out of its single cylinder engine, which, if you're following along at home, is only slightly faster than a Jixxer 250. That's real bad. The first issue we noticed while cleaning the CDI was that our boot is severely cracked and the cable itself is not secured in the housing, meaning it can freely spin back and forth. This could fatigue the core and cause a breakage, so we're going to go ahead and replace this. In all honesty, the 3 to 1 dilution mix can probably clean this entire bike by itself, but to make my life a little easier, I'm going to use the full strength foaming agent on the really nasty areas. With this being the older style spring tensioner, that's not as simple or robust as the newer style that mounts to the clutch cover on the sprocket side. We're taking extra care to examine it, and the Q-tips get some use here in this tight space. I have the twin leg bike stand setting on a piece of wood so I can freely spin the back wheel, which just makes cleaning the chain and other parts of the wheel a lot easier, and we're using the foaming agent full strength on the chain. We also got this convenient little chain cleaner. It's made for like motorcycles and ATVs from Walmart. And you can do this almost as easily with a standard scrub brush or a couple toothbrushes. But since I have this, I might as well use it. After a good cleaning and rinsing, I make sure I spray it with WD-40. This isn't necessarily to lube the chain, it's just to keep it from rusting until we do lube the chain. Cleaning the wheels is never fun, especially checking individual spokes, but it's something you gotta do at least every once in a while. For the tire, we're looking for sidewall punctures. This is common if you ride on gravel roads enough, eventually you're gonna get one. And the spokes, especially on the rear wheel, occasionally will come loose and you'll need to tighten them up. Already starting to see a nice difference, even if that's not our ultimate goal. The cap of our muffler has some caked on burnt oil. This doesn't really need to be cleaned off, but it's annoying me, so we're going to go to town with some foamy and a scrubby.
Now we were really asking a lot out of the absorber and this was pretty unexpected, but the carpet underneath was almost bone dry. Only a few little grease spots made it through where I assume the kickstand broke through the paper. So I guess we'll use some foamy and some scrubby and clean these up. With the bike now clean enough to set on my mechanics rug, we can now take a closer look at the bike and perform our basic maintenance. If you ride your bike every day, you're going to want to lube the chain once a week. Now I realize these are disposable hobbies for a lot of people, so at least lube your chain once a month. If your setup forces you to use a chain tensioner, make sure you check these nuts and bolts every time you lube the chain. The two minutes spent tightening these up can make the difference between a proper working wheel and a jagged mess of spaghetti. Now I get a lot of flack about riding my bikes in the rain from certain people, but it's just the way it's got to be. These are utility workhorses for me that get me from point A to point B, and a lot of times it's raining, or there's puddles, or snow, so things rust. There's not really a lot you can do to absolutely prevent rust, but you can do a lot to keep it from getting worse. These nuts and bolts will always have a little rust on them, but a bit of WD-40 prevents it from progressing out of control. Next, we're going to clean, inspect, and re-grease the clutch cam, bucking bar, and bearing. Other than a bit of rust, our cam looks pretty good. The edges are still sharp and not rounded out. Usually when you don't have grease on the clutch cam, it'll round out the edge and your clutch will no longer function. Our bucking bar pulls right out. It needs to be clean before we can inspect it. And for our bearing, we just use a magnet to pop it right out of place. To clean out this cavity, I'm just going to use some Q-tips to pull out the dirty old grease. I don't want to spray a degreaser in here because it might pull and get caught in this cavity, and then it would start to break down any of the fresh grease we put in. With the Super Clean, I pretty much just sprayed it and then rinsed it with water and most of the grease and dirt just fell off. I don't really need to scrub this, there's no point, because the first time you ride your bike, all the oil from the chain is just going to spray all over it anyways, and then dirt's going to collect to it. So, some parts of the bike don't need to be detailed, even if you are trying to detail the bike. Our bucking bar has some gouging on it, which means that I probably went too long before cleaning and re-greasing it, but it doesn't really affect anything. This is still fine. The important part is that it's not mushroomed out at the end, which would prevent the clutch from functioning properly. Surprisingly, our bearing looks almost perfect. There's no etching on it, which means that dirt didn't get caught up in the grease. So this is good to go. Seeing that most of the abuse this bike sees is water related, I'm going to try some marine grease this time for the bucking bar and the bearing, as well as the cam. I'll apply a liberal amount, especially to the cam. This should also help prevent rust from forming, as you saw when we pulled the cam out. There was no grease on it whatsoever. Most of the time, poor performance or no start situations are related to the carburetor, followed closely by the spark plug. These are incredibly simple carburetors. I love the design. They're easy to work on, easy to clean and maintain. But I have an entire video dedicated to these carburetors, so I'm going to leave a link in the description. If I try to do it in this video, it would just be way too long. So go check it out. Next, we're going to check the spark plug, head, head gasket, piston, and cylinder. This is something you're going to want to do after the first week of a new build, just to make sure everything in here is okay and you don't have any major issues that are about to ruin the hobby for you. But after that, you can get away without doing this for a few months, even longer. As long as you don't dramatically change your tune, your oil and fuel ratio, nothing in here is really going to change. But the most common failure point, catastrophic failure point, is the cylinder and piston. When things in here go, they just go and they don't give you much of a warning. But if you see gouging on the wall, that means you need to order a new cylinder and piston ASAP. Once we get our head off, you'll notice two things. First, a black line on the cylinder and the head gasket. This is because I've indexed it so that when I go to put it back on, I'll put it on in the right orientation. If you don't do this, it might not reseal when you put it back on the cylinder. You may also notice a bit of white residue on the head gasket. This is from before when I mentioned not using the Super Clean unless you plan on removing the head. That's just residue left over from cleaning, and we're going to go ahead and wipe that off. What you're looking for on the head gasket is oily residue. This can mean two things. One, you had a bad head gasket, or two, the head just was not torqued down properly. If you want to reuse the same head gasket, then just make sure when you put the head back on it's torqued down properly. That way, if it's still leaking, you'll know it's the gasket. It could also be a cracked head, but that's a lot less common. 
This is the same iron sleeve cylinder which some of you might recognize from a previous video where we were testing an iron sleeve for the first time. Now it gained some gouging on it almost immediately due to some user error which I've since alleviated to help prevent it from getting any worse. And to my surprise, the cylinder still looks the same. So we should be able to use this for many, many more miles. For a standard non-iron sleeve cylinder, you'll know it's a gouge if you can catch it with your fingernail, but if you can't, it's just a scuff and those are completely normal. Now I run this motor oil rich because of the iron sleeve and that causes a little bit of gum up around the edge of the spark plug, but it's not fouled the plug so we're still in a good ballpark. The coffee brown color of the diode is perfect in my opinion. This is an ideal color for a spark plug. If you're dark brown or black, you're running too rich. And if you're light gray or chalk, then you're running too lean. That's not the end all say all because heat range can have an effect. So you can try different heat range of spark plugs. Moving on over to the clutch side, we're going to go ahead and examine and grease the bevel gears. These gears look surprisingly clean, but they're lacking some grease. So all we need to do is grease them. I break and lose the gasket for this cover all the time, but I've got a trick that keeps the water and dirt out. I simply take a bit of grease and run a bead along the mating surface for the clutch cover. The lifespan of cables on my bikes are pretty short because they get exposed to the elements so often, but a trick that does help prolong their lifespan is a bit of WD-40 run down the tube and then cycled a few times. I do this for my throttle and my clutch cable bit of WD-40 on the seat tube and while cleaning I noticed that the rear brake cable is severely frayed at the junction. This could snap at any time and we would lose our rear brakes. We also need to replace the pads as they're all shot on this bike. And of course we have our new CDI. Getting the old duct tape residue off this tank is an easy job with WD-40 and a nylon scrub brush. That is not pretty, but still better than duct tape. Yeah, that did not at all turn out how I thought it would, but it'll do until we get a new tank. As I'm sure you guys noticed by now in the video, we spent more time cleaning the bike than maintaining the motor. That's because these are just so simple little motors. Super Clean did a fantastic job on this bike. Cleaning a bike is cleaning a bike. But we cleaned the dirtiest bike I've ever had. And we did it in the house. I would have never done it in the house without that stuff. No more than a sheet of paper on the ground and some absorber. And I still have a clean carpet. I think it's actually cleaner now than it was before I started the video. Anyways, until next time, guys, ride safe and let me know in the comments what you want to see in the next video.